to the fundamental woodwinds, the bassoon. My name is Melissa Kritzer, and I am thrilled to share with you the lesser known bassoon. Like most woodwinds, the bassoon is made of wood, mountain maple to be specific. I blow air through the reed, a double reed like the oboe, which by itself has a coarse, weak sound. But when that sound is amplified through the bassoon, it has a rich tone. The Renaissance precursor to the bassoon is called the dulcian. The name means soft or sweet, and throughout the entire history of the bassoon, it has kept these characteristics, that it is relatively soft compared to other instruments, and also for an indoor use. The dulcian historically is carved from a single piece of wood that is played in a choir of instruments that range from the small soprano dulcian to the longer and therefore lower bass dulcian. Increasing virtuosity and depth of pitch required in Baroque music led to the development of four separate wooden parts that are fitted together. It was such a huge improvement to the refinement of the bassoon that they actually changed the name. These pieces are the same today. They are the tenor, the wing, the bell, and the boot. To this, we add the metal vocal. The defining concept of the bassoon is that a very long tube, more than eight feet, fits into the hands to be played by folding back on itself. From 1600 to 1825, the bassoon went from one to 15 keys. At the same time, smaller versions faded into obscurity, while the lowest version was adapted into the orchestra to be played as the lowest member of the woodwind section. Throughout the 19th century, the instrument acquired better technique, expression, and volume, as well as another 10 or more keys. The unique timbre of the bassoon is very close to the human voice. The bassoon can have an exotic sound, which is demonstrated by this high plaintive solo. Now let's go a full three and a half octaves down to sample the lowest notes of the bassoon, which have a lot of character. When the composer wants to add depth to the orchestra's sound, a very effective technique is to use the lowest modern bassoon, the contrabassoon. The contrabassoon is folded back on itself four times and it sounds an octave lower than the regular bassoon. It is famously used by the composer Maurice Farvel to depict the beast in Beauty and the Beast. All bassoonists make their own reads and it is a refined skill that allows for a personal connection between the player and the individual instrument. We do use many machines, but the last few steps require careful handwork. There are actually two types of bassoon played in the world today, the French and German systems. The German system offers a dark homogenous tone that is favored in most countries, including the United States. The piece I'm going to play actually combines both of these traditions. It is by a French female composer named Fernand de Crook. De Crook was born in 1896 in the southwest of France, educated at the Toulouse and Paris conservatories, 
De Crook was a virtuoso organist and an influential composer. In the late 1920s and early 1930s, De Crook lived in New York City with her husband who played in the New York Philharmonic and their children. By 1929, De Crook's exceptional talent had earned her a tour of organ concerts. In her New York debut, she improvised a symphony in several movements on themes suggested by American composers. The work I'm going to perform was found in the basement of her son's home in Fontainebleau, France. When I first received the work, it looked like this. I put the music into notation software to read it and play it. Scherzo Fantasque comes from de Kirk's early period. The music fuses virtuosic passages from the classical scherzo, modal harmonies, as well as French cabaret song. The work almost feels improvised, except for its underlying structure. I hope that you love the complexity and melancholy of Fernand's work as much as I do.